Okay, let's start by creating our first Visual Studio 2010 website. Uh, we're going to first load up Visual Studio and you'll see that you have to select an environment in which to develop. By default, we want it to be web development. This is an ASP.NET course. Once we've got the environment set, we want to go ahead and create a new website. We do not want to create a new project. A new project actually contains a file that manages all the files within the website itself. We want a new website. We'll discuss that in a little more detail later. You can choose between Visual Basic or Visual C Sharp. For these demos, we will be using Visual C Sharp. Feel free to use Visual Basic if you're more comfortable with that language. We're also going to choose ASP.NET website as opposed to the empty website. The ASP.NET website includes master pages that it makes this site look a little more professional. We'll discuss the master pages later. Okay, I want you to go ahead and select on your default.aspx to make sure that it is currently the page showing. And then I want you to highlight all the content between the opening ASP colon content tag and the closing ASP colon content tag and hit the delete key. And we're going to go ahead and add our own content starting with a heading tag and hello world. We'll also go ahead and add more content to the body of this page by creating a paragraph tag. I'm also going to use some server-side uh, script that allows me to tell the server to get today's date and time and pass it to the web browser. We'll go into more detail on these server-side tags later in this course. We'll go response.write, or shortcut of equal, and date time dot now dot to string, which takes the date time, current date time, and converts it to a string to display in the web page. I'm going to go ahead and tab these over to make it easier to read if we ever go and make changes to this file. And next we're going to hit F5, Control F5, or the green arrow. Now if we hit the green arrow or hit F5, by default it will load in debug mode. In debug mode you'll actually see this warning message pop up. It is not a critical failure. It is simply telling you that your web config file is not currently set to debug equal to true. We want to go ahead and click on that file uh, and by clicking on that file it will automatically modify the web web.config you'll see in the solution explorer on the right. Next, you'll see your page pop up with your content and your paragraph 